Are you wondering why the performance of your social media channels is so low compared to other channels? And are you questioning the reliability of GA4? In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why social channels are often treated unfairly in GA4 and why in many cases there are less conversions attributed to social channels than to other channels. And also at the end of the video, I'm gonna give some tips and my thoughts on how to move forward with this. All right, let's dive in. Welcome to the channel, my name is Leon. This channel exists to help you make better decisions in your daily work using your analytics data. If you like what I'm doing, please click the like and subscribe buttons down below. That would really help me get this video out to as many people as I can. Also, if you like this video and want to watch more, there is a link in the video description to an entire playlist full of videos just like this. So today I want to talk about why social channels often do not get enough credit attributed to them, even though they may work fine. So let's look at GA4 together. Something that happens all the time is you're analyzing your channels in the traffic acquisition report. And I could also look at session source medium. You see that social channels, for instance, Facebook bring in a lot of traffic, but you do not see a lot of conversions on those channels. So here I have 1600 users, a little bit more, and then I have a little bit of revenue, which is just a very little part of this whole sum. And this is probably a little bit organic Facebook traffic, but you could have some paid Facebook traffic or Instagram traffic or Pinterest traffic, whatever. You could have that traffic rolling into your site, but you do not see a lot of conversion coming out of that. So this is what happens with a lot of my clients, especially clients that have strong emphasis on social media advertising together with targeting consumer markets. And one client in particular, he has an agency and he called me that uh, J4 did not attribute any conversions to their campaigns. And then they made this bold move of shutting down all the campaigns, putting them on hold for, I believe, an entire week just to see what would happen to conversions. And uh, as he expected, conversions dried up, it went to a halt, and then they put on the campaigns and conversions came back also. So even though J4 did not attribute conversions or many conversions to uh, the social channels, uh, shutting down the social channels caused the conversions to come to a halt. So why is this? Well, let's talk about the type of traffic that comes through from social channels. First of all, if people are looking actively for some kind of solution, the chances that they will convert in that same session are much higher. For instance, if you are looking to buy a shirt, you just go into Google and type in your favorite brand or you just go straight to your favorite online retailer to find the shirt that you're looking for. And you're probably gonna purchase it if you find something that you like. But social media traffic behaves very differently. Traffic from social sites is often very volatile. People are not actively looking for something. They are not actively looking for a solution or anything. They were just browsing their feed and they stumbled upon your ad or your uh, organic post. And perhaps they even clicked through to your site and they may spend some time there, but the chances are that they're gonna purchase a shirt or apply for a job or whatever conversion you have on your site is not very high because they did not intend to do that in the first place. They were just spending time in their social media account. This does not mean that social media channels are useless. It just means that the type of traffic is just very different. Those people probably will need a little bit more time. It is just a different game. So you would say that if you would analyze the return visits from that traffic, you would find that there would follow a lot of conversions out of that traffic. But this is where many web analytics solutions are very misleading. They give the illusion that you can see all the return visits from everyone that visits your site. But uh, return visits are often not tracked on social channels. And this is the reason why. Return visits are only tracked if the return visits is in exactly the same browser on exactly the same device. And especially with social traffic, this is often not the case because people, especially consumers, are often just logged in to their Facebook app on their mobile phone. And whenever you open a link within that Facebook app, there's a so-called in-app browser. So you're not 
leaving the app and go to your regular browser. You're not going to, for instance, Chrome or Safari or whatever browser you've installed, but you stay inside the Facebook app and there's an in-app browser that opens up. You do not have all the navigation that you have in your regular interface. And then you browse there and then when you close the session, you end up in your feed again. And this way, you spend a little bit more time in the apps and this is why, of course, they have built it this way. But the cookie that analytics needs, so for instance, GA4 or PB Pro or whatever analytics tool you're using at the moment, is placed inside that in-app browser and not in, in your regular browser. So let's say that you put out an ad, people click on it, they spend a little bit of time in the in-app browser, and then after a while they think, hey, I'm gonna purchase the product, and they open up the regular browser. That session cannot be linked to the first session because they're essentially in a different browser with a new cookie. So they're tracked as a new user, a different user from the user that has been tracked before. And all the conversions that happen after that are attributed to organic or direct or however they end up on the site in the second session. So even if you would use sophisticated attribution models, they would not be able to link the conversions back to your social media campaign because that session was performed in a different browser, the in-app browser. And attribution models just only work if all the sessions are performed on exactly the same device in exactly the same browser. And that is often not the case. So let's dive into GA4 and find out if you're affected by this. I've opened up the tech details report in the report section under user, under tech, tech details, and I've selected a little longer time range. So I've selected uh, one year of data. I see all the browsers here from all the users that are on my site. And then I'm gonna filter this report down under add filter. And I'm gonna filter by session source medium. And I'm gonna say I want it to exactly match. And I'm gonna just look for all my social channels, for instance, Facebook. So here are a couple of Facebook channels. I'm gonna look for Instagram. Yeah, there are some Instagram channels. LinkedIn, yeah. And I know that there's some Pinterest traffic also. And then I'm gonna click apply. And I'm gonna look at all the browsers that are used by this traffic. This is gonna take a little bit of time. So in my top three, I have the Android WebView browser and I also have the Safari in-app browser. So let's calculate how much this is. So 1170 plus 455. So 1600 of the total traffic from social media. So almost 70% of all the traffic from social media channels is performed inside a in-app browser. So let's analyze the behavior of these in-app browsers. The Android WebView and the Safari in-app browser both have quite low engagement time. So a minute for Android and 20 seconds for Safari in-app. And if I just compare that to I've the grand total, so I remove the filter here and I see the grand total engagement time here, it's two minutes. So the engagement time here from within the in-app browsers is low. And this is what I see all the time. Again, because it's just volatile, people are not intending to purchase a shirt, but they were just browsing through their socials. And also if I look at revenue from these browsers, it's zero dollars. So again, this is what I see all the time. If people come from social media, from these in-app browsers, they're not usually converting right away. So you can do the same analysis on your site to figure out, am I affected by this? All right, so now that we know what causes the problem, and now that we've analyzed if we're affected by it, let's talk about some solutions. And unfortunately, because all web analytics solutions are some way or another usually based on cookies, all of them are affected by the same problem. And the first thing that I really recommend is that you educate your team, educate your clients, educate everyone that you work with, especially if you have a strong emphasis on social channels. Because people need to understand that Google Analytics and also other web analytics programs are not 100% accurate, especially in this area, when in many cases people use different browsers and different sessions cannot be linked. So in this area, GA4 and other programs will probably assign a lot of conversions to the wrong channels. It's just very important that people know that GA4 is not always right on this. The second recommendation that I have is to use data from other programs as well. Especially if you have paid ad set up, you probably will have some tracking set up to see conversions from within the ad manager. And the data there 
is also not perfect, but because they use a little bit different tracking, often they will find conversions where GA4 cannot see them. Keep in mind that if you're using trackers for your advertising platforms, they will need cookie consent first. And many people will not give cookie consent, so that data is compromised very much as well. But if you use that data alongside of GA4, it at least gives you a little bit better picture of what's really happening. The third recommendation that I have is if direct call to actions to purchase a shirt or apply for this job now do not seem to work, what you can do is use a so-called lead magnet email signup conversion instead. What that means is that you do not say purchase a shirt, but you give some kind of discount in exchange for an email address, or you give something else that is valuable for free in exchange for an email address that has two advantages. First of all, you get to measure the amount of email signups, which is some measure of success for your email campaigns. Because if you get zero conversions on your purchase call to action or your apply now for the job conversion, you at least have something to measure. And also email addresses are a very good way to follow up on that session. You do not lose that traffic and have to trust that they come back. You have their email address, you can follow them up with an email sequence. The fourth recommendation that I have is you can ask a simple question in your checkout form or in your lead form stating how did you find us? Just with a simple drop down that has a couple of options. For instance, I used the search engine. For instance, uh, I saw your social media advertisement. Friends recommended it to me. So you have a couple of options. And just when people respond to that question, you will have some idea of how many leads actually came from your social media campaign just by asking your customers. So the last recommendation that I have is not really a recommendation, but it's more like a look into the future. I see that there are two paths. Perhaps the first path is that we're gonna just focus a lot more on the session and not on the user because it becomes more and more difficult to link different sessions together. So I believe that could be a potential path that going forward that web analytics is not trying to focus so much on the user anymore because there are so many errors and, and things that can go wrong when going that path. The other path is the path of uh, machine learning and modeling to try to estimate how many conversions came from the different channels. And this is the reason I think why machine learning, but also Google signals is applied to GA4 because cookies are not so reliable anymore. So we're gonna need other techniques to fill in and estimate where the conversions are coming from. Unfortunately, up to this day, I've not been able to get a better picture from those models. At this point, I prefer to just look at device-based or user ID, but perhaps in the future that will improve. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was clear. I hope it was helpful. If you have any question, please leave it down in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe to the channel. That really helps me get these videos out to as many people as I can. If you want to watch more videos, there's a link in the video description to an entire playlist full of videos just like this. All right, I hope you'll have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.